Please join with me in the call to worship in the opening prayer. The Holy One calls our sons and our daughters to prophecy. We come ready to hear the word of God. The Holy One calls our young children to see visions. We come ready to see new visions. The Holy One calls our elders to dream dreams. We come ready to dream new dreams. The Spirit of the Holy One is poured upon all flesh. We come ready to be filled with God's Spirit. God of breath and fire, God, God of past and future. God of all that is and of all that ever shall be. When Jesus knew that he was going to the cross, he promised to his disciples that they would not be left alone. Jesus assured them that the Holy Spirit would remain with them, teaching them how to live, and reminding them of all that he has said. Weeks later, when the day of Pentecost arrived, you poured out your spirit, giving your disciples the power to speak in many languages and making tongues of flame dance above their heads. Today, we ask that you pour out your spirit on us, giving us the wisdom and the courage to live in peace as Jesus follows. Amen. Opening hymn is As a Fire is Meant for a Burning in The Faith We Sing, 2237. Now is the time for our prayers. Let us join together in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the beauty of this day, for the beauty of the people who have gathered together, for the beauty 
of your holiness. We lift up all of those who we have named in prayer so far today. And we also lift up all who we have not mentioned, as we all know there are times when the mention of a person's name can bring us to such a place of sadness that we cannot speak aloud. And so we are grateful for your Holy Spirit who speaks words on our behalf so that our needs and our prayers are lifted up to you, holy God. We pray for the people of Ukraine and of Russia and all the surrounding countries. We pray for those in leadership who are struggling to find paths of peace and those who are adamant there will never be peace. May we find ways of leading and guiding our own responses. We pray for those areas in the United States that have already been hit by natural disasters, by forest fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, flooding, and we pray for answers on how we can manage to do the best for our world. We also pray for the ongoing reality of shooting deaths in our country. There were two more just last night that we are aware of. How many more have there been? Help us to have rational thoughts and actions around gun usage, gun violence, and the babies that continue to be killed. Give our hearts hope and courage. Give us words of wisdom. Show us the path to walk to make a difference in this world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it had filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there was the devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? And from Romans, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. God's word. Our preparation hymn is Where the Spirit of the Lord is, number 2119. We will actually sing it through two times.
A reading from John, beginning in chapter 14. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. In this 14th chapter of John, Jesus appeared to be trying to get his disciples to understand the complex relationship between God, humanity, and Jesus. Now, in these six verses, he added another aspect of this relationship, the Holy Spirit. Jesus talked about leaving his disciples to go and prepare a place for them. At this point in time, his followers still didn't understand that he was actually going to leave them. He wanted to offer assurance and comfort that even though he was gone, they wouldn't be left alone. Jesus said he would prepare rooms in his father's house and that they knew how to get there. Jesus had such great hopes for his followers, and yet we know they didn't grasp the idea of resurrection until after it happened. How could they possibly understand what he was saying now? Where was he going? Who would he send? They couldn't deal with the idea that they would be left alone again. And I spoke on this a couple of weeks ago and shared just why it was that Jesus had to leave. And now we have dear Thomas, who we know was willing to ask the questions no one else would. He was bold enough to say, but Jesus, we don't know where you are going. So how can we possibly know the way? This statement was so typical of the lack of understanding of Jesus' followers. Yet can't you almost hear Jesus saying, but Thomas, I am the way. And Thomas probably still didn't understand. Jesus assured his friends that when he left, they would not be alone. He said, I will ask the Father, and the Father will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Another advocate. What did that mean? Who was the first advocate? Did they understand the idea of an advocate and what an advocate does? How many advocates had God sent to the people prior to this time? In Matthew, Jesus spoke about prophets and scribes being sent to the people. Weren't the Old Testament prophets a type of advocate? An advocate is someone who publicly supports a purpose or plan. The prophets of old were certainly advocating for God's plan, and telling the people they needed to get right with God. This also tells us that Jesus was an advocate, doing the same work as the prophets, but with a twist. Jesus knew the heart and mind of God, for he was God. 
Now he was in the position of needing to leave the disciples behind to return to God. We hear that word advocate and understand it to mean to speak for something or someone, to take up a cause and speak in someone's favor. An advocate may advocate for someone or something. It's one of those words. Maybe with a little explanation, the disciples would have understood what an advocate was. But they did, did they understand who it was? What I found interesting in verse 16 is that Jesus said, and he will give you another advocate. Did the disciples get the significance in it that this was another, a second or third or fourth or fifth advocate? Did they realize that Jesus was the first one for them and what he had been doing for them all this time? Did they understand that Jesus had been interceding and advocating for them from the very beginning? Do we understand that? Jesus speaks on our behalf. He didn't say that he would stop doing that just because he was going to the Father. He just wanted the disciples to have the comfort of knowing that someone else would dwell with and in them to guide and teach, that they wouldn't be left alone. Jesus was human. He lived in a body of flesh and bones. He knew that he could not stay with the disciples forever. So he offered them someone else who could stay, the Holy Spirit. Jesus said this spirit would be able to continue the work that he had started. He said, the advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Jesus was the first teacher of these truths, and he had to leave. So he would make certain that another teacher would be there to continue the good works. The followers of this new way would be taught everything and be reminded of the things Jesus had said. That sounds to me like a pretty perfect gift. Not only will everyone have an indwelling part of God to lead and teach, but this guide will also be our internal reminder of the good news that Jesus shared. Today is Pentecost, a day in which the world came to know the power of God. The phrase clothed with power is one very good reason why people wear red or orange, or in this case, green and blue. Okay, we'll work with that. The red, the orange, similar colors signify that we are clothed and covered by God's Spirit that came on that day so many centuries ago. Those flames that hovered over each person's head and that irrepressible need to speak God's glory and tell Jesus' message were how God clothed the people in that moment in power. We have received the Holy Spirit, and we will receive it again, daily, if needed, because we love and believe God. As creator, as companion, as mothering God who gave us birth, as advocate. It is true through the Spirit that God dwells in each of us that we can actively participate in the relationship that God set up for us. It is God as spirit who advocates on behalf of each of us. 
You may wonder, how do we know that God's Spirit lives in us? Well, it's right there in Scripture. Jesus said, you know him. He abides with you and will be in you. Where is the evidence in our lives? It is God as Spirit who nudges and warns and works to keep us safe. It is God's Spirit that offers us words to speak and change people's lives. It is this advocate, this loving, personal aspect of God that speaks on our behalf when our grief and despair are too deep for our own words. There's an old hymn that speaks about God dwelling in us and the directions God gives on our behalf. I remember finding it at some point in an old, old United Methodist hymnal. No, it probably was not United Methodist. It was a Methodist hymnal. But I truly actually learned this hymn from the play Godspell, which is where my shirt comes from. I was musical director at Lighthouse Repertory Theater 2001. So from Godspell, I learned this wonderful song, Turn back, O man, forswear thy foolish ways. Old now is earth, and none may count her days. Yet thou, her child, whose head is crowned with flame, still wilt not hear thine inner God proclaim, turn back, O human, forswear thy foolish ways. Hear thine inner God proclaim, turn back, is exactly what I've been talking about in the spirit of God, which indwells us to teach us to protect us and to guide us. If God tells us to turn around, then by golly, we better turn around. Have you heard your inner God recently? Have you been listening? The advocate was promised to us, and the promise was that the spirit would stay forever. Unlike Jesus, who needed to leave so the message could be spread, the Spirit, the breath of God, will abide with us and in us for all time. Jesus said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Let us pray. Breath and Spirit of God be in us this day and always. Open our ears to hear your voice and heed your call. Show us how to trust that you will guide us to all good things. Let us breathe you in and be inspired and then breathe out your good news so that the world may know of you. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. Spirit of truth, giver of vision, sender of dreams, our hearts remain troubled and afraid. For we fear the future, forgetting your promise to do whatever we ask in your name. You promise to fill us with new vision, to give us gifts of prophecy and dreams. Yet we act as if we are on our own forgetting your promise to fill us with your spirit. You tell us that we are not alone, that we are, you are always with us. Forgive us when we forget and we fail to keep your commandments to love you and one another. Hear the good news, the Holy Spirit is always with us, filling us with prophecy, visions, and dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As you consider the offerings for this day, remember there are always those who need assistance 
Our churches need support to continue being a voice in this area. Please join me in the offering prayer. Sender of dreams, spirit of truth, giver of visions, accept these gifts and offerings as evidence of the holy fire burning in our hearts. Amen. It is now time to prepare for communion. We are actually taking communion from the cup and with bread. I thank Cindy for baking the bread. She gave us an extra loaf. It was absolutely delicious. And how we will do it is I will actually pick up the, the bread, dip it, and then hand you the piece that has been dipped so there won't be any other hands messing around in it. Not that you're not welcome, but we all know what's been happening for the past two years. So that is my precaution for this day. And I know I had gloves. Christ be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Holy One. It is a right, good, and joyful thing always and everywhere to give our thanks to you who poured out tongues of fire on the disciples at Pentecost. You promise to give our young people visions of a better world and our elders dreams of peace. All who are led by your spirit are your children, joint heirs with Christ in both suffering and glory. And so with your creatures on earth and all the heavenly chorus, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and holy is your child Jesus who sent the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we would not be left alone. On the night in which he gave himself up, he took bread, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, all of you. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. After supper, he also took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you for the healing of the world. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of grain and grapes, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ filled with your, the fire from the Holy Spirit for the healing 
of the world. Sender of dreams, spirit of truth, giver of vision, you are the one God to whom we offer our praise and thanks. Amen. And please join with me in singing the Lord's Prayer as found up on the screen. Our God in heaven, holy is your name. Your reign come, your will done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our day. Beloved family, the table is prepared and all are welcome. Please come and partake. Let us pray. God, you have poured out your spirit upon us that we may be the hands and feet and words of your message in this world. May we continue to abide in the Holy Spirit. 
and give us desire to seek your peace and your truth. Amen. Our closing hymn is O Holy Spirit, Root of Life, page 2121 in The Faith We Sing. If you would like, you are welcome to stand. And I think I have a typo. It's lustrous movement of your wings, not winds, perhaps. But, you know, it all works. So may we sing our closing hymn. Beloved of God, as you go out this day going, know that you are surrounded and filled with God's spirit. Enjoy the beauty of God's presence, the beauty of God's creation, and be one with God. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.